Hello. In this uh, video, I want to talk about uh, problem 2.1 from chapter 12, and this is a monopoly uh, question, where the monopoly is able to perfectly price discriminate. All right, so in this uh, example here, we have a monopoly that faces an inverse demand function given by P equals 90 minus Q. And always when we have a monopoly, the, the inverse demand function is the market demand. So this is everybody wants to buy this good, has to buy it from this one firm. We also know that this monopoly has constant marginal and average cost, and those are equal to 30. And we know that a monopoly is able to perfectly price discriminate. All right, so the first thing I want to do is just talk a little bit about what that means. So in order to price discriminate, there is a, a few things that have to be uh, true. So the first one is uh, the firm has to have market power, right? So market power means that the, the firm has uh, the ability to set the price above the marginal cost, right? So the, it has to be a, a firm with some monopoly power. And that means like just about any firm except a perfectly competitive firm. The second thing is that the consumers that uh, the firm is facing must have different uh, willingness to pay, or we usually say different reservation prices, right? So we have to have that consumers are different in terms of what they are willing to pay for the good. And the third, and this is very important, uh, the, the monopoly must be able to prevent resale. Right, so we can't have that the monopoly sell the good to some consumers for a cheap price, and those consumers can then just turn around and sell the good to a group of people that the firm would like to sell the good at a high price for. Right, so you can't have, uh, say, retired people buy all the cheap uh, movie tickets and then turn around and sell it to, uh, you know, us regular people. So, uh, okay, so those are the three. So we have to have those three uh, uh, characteristics of the market being true. And it, it's, I just should maybe say it here that almost all firms that are not perfectly competitive have some ability to price discriminate. Although many firms choose to not do it because it would be too costly or too difficult. Anyway, back to this problem. A firm that can perfectly price discriminate is able to charge each customer her reservation price. Right? So you can charge each customer the maximum amount of money that she would be willing to pay. Of course, that is both unrealistic and uh, that means that we would charge everybody uh, up to the point that they're willing to pay, which means there would be a point on the demand curve. And because of that, a perfectly price discriminating monopolist can uh, capture all the consumer surplus. So if we had a demand curve, we would be able to capture the whole area below the demand curve and above the price. So let me just uh, draw this picture in this diagram right here. So just quickly, we would have a demand curve that would go from 90, actually and go to 90, and then we'll have a marginal and average cost that would be at 30. That will be our marginal cost, which is equal to the average cost because it's constant. And uh, yeah, so what we'll be looking for then is for every consumer. So if a consumer who is willing to buy the fifth good, we would charge that consumer that price and then you know, the next, you know, some other consumer, we would charge a lower price. And again, it seems somewhat unrealistic because the monopolist would have to know exactly how much each consumer is willing to pay for the good. And of course, every consumer would have an incentive to not tell the monopoly what they're willing to pay, or at least lie about that, because as soon as they tell it truthfully, the monopolist would charge them that price. Anyway, so uh, 
Uh, the monopolist would then, uh, you know, how do you capture this whole uh, consumer surplus? Well, the first thing we, we see when we look at this diagram is that you want to produce a quantity where the price of the last good is equal to the marginal cost, right? So we, we're going to be here where the, the demand curve intersects the uh, marginal cost curve. And of course, that is also the same place that a competitive firm would be producing. So a perfectly price discriminating monopolist would produce the same amount as a perfectly competitive firm. And then, of course, we know that we would charge everybody their willingness to pay their reservation price. So uh, by doing that, we can see that we, this whole area, which we would usually call consumer surplus, that will now become monopoly profit. All right, so let's uh, solve this uh, question more carefully in the next slide. All right, so here we have, again, I re redrew the, the diagram here. Let me just uh, put the numbers. We know that the demand curve is going to start at 90. It's going to end at 90. And we have a marginal cost and average cost that is constant at 30. And the question is, what is the uh, monopoly's profit? Well, the first thing we have to figure out is what is the quantity that they will be producing. So again, we know that P equals 90 minus Q, and we know that in this equilibrium, price is gonna be equal to marginal cost, which is equal to 30. So if I just plug that in, we see that they're gonna be producing and selling 60 units. So that's gonna be my, uh, my point right there. And then to calculate the profit, we need to calculate this is going to be equal to the consumer surplus, which again is the area below the demand curve above the price that they charge. I'm going to just, uh, let me just, so the consumer surplus, which is now going to become the perfectly price discriminating monopolies profit is going to be this area. And the area of a triangle is, of course, just equal to the height. So that's 90 minus 30 times the base, which is 60 minus 0. And divided by 2. So that's 60 times 60 divided by 2. So that's going to be 1,800. That's our uh, profit. What is consumer surplus then? Well... Since the monopolist captured all the consumer surplus, the consumer surplus is actually zero. What is the welfare for this uh, in this market? Well, the welfare is total surplus, but so usually it would be consumer surplus plus producer surplus. But in this case, there is no consumer surplus, and the profit is equal to the producer surplus and therefore total welfare is also 1,800. And what is the dead weight loss equal to? Well, we might not like this outcome, but in terms of efficiency, it is very efficient. There is no dead weight loss either. So that would be the answer to our question. Before I finish though, uh, let me just uh, ask, you know, what would be the difference if this monopoly was actually a single price monopoly? That is, if it was a standard monopoly where uh, the monopoly could only charge one price to all consumers, so they have to figure out what is the best price that they could do. And we know for a single, I'm going to write that down, single price monopoly, we know, of course, that uh, the solution comes from finding a quantity for which marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So I have to find marginal revenue first. So prices, the inverse demand curve is P equals 90 minus Q. My revenue curve is price times quantity. So that's 90 minus Q times Q, which is of course 90 Q minus Q squared. If I take the derivative of the revenue with respect to quantity, I'm going to get marginal revenue, which is 90 minus 2q. I'm going to draw that in my diagram here. 
So the Mar revenue curve is going to start at the same intercept and then it's going to have twice the slope. So it's going to be like that. It's going to hit this point at half, so it'll be 45. And you can see that the point we're looking for here is where the marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So let me find that one then. So marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So that's going to be 90 minus 2Q equals the marginal cost. And in this case, the marginal cost is constant at 30. 2Q equals 60. Q is going to be equal to 30. So we just found that the quantity that the single price monopoly would produce would be 30 and then we can find the single price by going up to the demand curve and figure out what the optimal price would be so we'll just plug that in so it'll be 90 minus Q and Q is now 30 so the price will be equal to 60 and of course the profit of this single price monopoly would be equal to price minus average cost times quantity which is 60 minus 30 times 30 equals 900. So uh, the profit would be a lot lower, half, if the monopoly was a single price monopoly as opposed to a perfectly price discriminating monopoly. Uh, of course, there are some good things about this, maybe, uh, because at this point, there will actually be some consumer surplus, and you can see the consumer surplus would be, you know, this area above the new price, below the demand curve. So consumer surplus would have been 30 times 30 divided by 2, so that's 450. But we can also see that there will be a deadweight loss associated with a single price. And that's going to be actually the same thing, 30 times 30 divided by 2. And you can notice, just to check ourselves, adding up 450 plus 450 plus 900 gives us 1800, which is uh, matching what we had before. All right, so that's all I want to do in this video. Thank you.